إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فيطيب لي أن ألتقي بإخوتي في هذه الكلية المباركة كلية المدينة واسمها محبوب كما هو واضح وتسميتها موفقة والقائمون عليها كذلك فنسأل الله أن يأخذ بأيديهم لسلوك هدي السلف الصالح إنه جواد كريم uh, The Sheikh he said that it pleases him to meet his brothers in Islam and he said that in this uh, college Medina College and he said that the name Medina the Medina College Medina is something which is beloved and calling it Medina College is something inshallah which has uh, uh, success or tawfiq inshallah by the permission of Allah and the Shaykh he said that those that are uh, established in the college and run in the college inshallah he also makes dua for them for tawfiq as well so the Shaykh made dua for the college and for everybody running it now وأنا أتابع نشاط هذه الكلية عن طريق أخي الشيخ فيصل وفقه الله ويعني يبشرني ويطمئنني دائما أنها تسير على خير ما يرام والله الحمد والمنة وهذا فضل من الله ونسأل الله المزيد And the Shaykh he said that he follows the activities of the college via Shaykh Faisal Al-Jasim who is the Mushrif of the college and with that as you can see this is my word so you can see that the Shaykh is one of those that are supervising and overlooking the activities of the college as well and this is one of the uh, I guess the distinguishing features of Medina College is that it has the support of the Mashaykh and we always go back to the Mashaykh and look to their advice and guidance Islam Shaykh وَلَا أَنْسَ تِلْكَ الْجُهُودَ الَّذِي يَقُومُ بِهَا الَّتِي يَقُومُ بِهَا أَخِي الشَّيْخَ عَبْدُ الْوَاحِدُ وَفَّقَهُ اللَّهِ ونسأل الله لهم العلم النافع والعمل الصالح. And then the Sheikh he made dua for the people running the college now. إخو إخوتي في الله حديثي معكم في هذه الليلة عن أهمية التوحيد والطريق الصحيح لدراسته وبما يبدأ في الدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. So the Shaykh said the topic of today's lecture, this evening's lecture, is the importance of a tawheed and the methodology, the correct methodology of studying a tawheed and also. Uh, <laughs> and also, and calling to tawheed as well the importance and significance. <laughs> أولاً إن التوحيد هو أول واجب على المكلف ولذا بيّن الله سبحانه وتعالى أنه هو المقصود والحكمة من خلق الجن والإنس كما قال جل وعلا وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين. So the Sheikh began by saying the uh, Tawheed is the first obligation upon the worshipper, and for that reason Allah Subhanahu wa Taala clarified and told us that it's the objective and the wisdom behind the creation is of jinn and ins of humanity and the jinn kind is that to establish Tawheed and to worship Allah. And then the Shaykh he recited the ayat, the verse, the English translation being, and I did not, Allah says, mentions, I did not create the jinn and the humankind except to establish my worship. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ولهذه الحكمة يجب على المسلم أن يبدأ بادئ ذي بدء بتعلم أسس التوحيد وما بادئه الرئيسة. And for this wisdom and this reason, it's an obligation of the Muslim to begin his studies 
and to race towards in his early, the studies that he does first, in learning a tawheed and learning aqidah. No, بعض الطوائف المنحرفة تقول ليس التوحيد هو أول واجب وإنما أول واجب هو النظر أو القصد إلى النظر أو الشك وهذا أمر في غاية الخطورة انحرف بكثير من المسلمين عن الهدف المنشود الذي خلقوا من أجله you have some misguided or groups that are misguided, some sects that have gone astray. They, they say that the first obligation isn't a tawheed, rather it is to uh, look or to contemplate and to reflect or to have doubt and to ask questions about the Creator rather than to establish tawheed first. And as a result of this, this is the most, one of the most dangerous things that has resulted in the misguidance of lots and lots of Muslims. يجد أن التوحيد هو محور دعوة الرسل وأساس دعوتهم جميعا كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون وقال تعالى فاعلم وقال تبارك وتعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة الرسول أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت وقال تبارك وتعالى مبينا دعوة أنبيائه نوح وشعيب وصالح وهود كلهم قالوا لقولهم لقومهم اعبدوا الله ما لكم من إله غيره كما هو واضح في سورتي هود والأعرف And then the Shaykh continues by saying a person that looks and in the, at the book and the sunnah at the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he will find that a tawheed is the foundation of the call of all of the prophets and messengers. And then the Shaykh he mentioned three ayat in this regard. One, the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the English translation being, Allah says that we did not send before any messenger except that we revealed to him, I am Allah, not, there's no God except for me, so worship me. And then the second ayat that the Shaykh mentioned is the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the English translation being, and we have sent to every ummah a messenger saying, worship Allah or worship me, do not associate and stay away from Taghut. And also as well, Allah, the Shaykh, he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies and explains to us that the call of all of the Anbiya, every single one of them, when they went to their people, they invited them and they called them and they told them with the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, worship Allah, there is no... Allah, you do not have a God other than him. And this is in Surah Al-Hud and Al-A'raf. كذلك نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما جاء لتحقيق التوحيد ولدعوة الناس إليه وتخليصه من شوائب الشرك والبدع والمعاصي ولذلك فإن الله عز وجل يقول مخاطبا نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك Also as well our beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he came to realize and to establish التوحيد and to call people to it and to warn people and to purify them from a shirk which is polytheism and of sins and also of innovations. And in this regard, the Shaykh quoted the statement of Allah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and here we have the English translation meaning, know that there is no God except for Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins. <laughs> ورسله ومندوبيه إلى 
القبائل وإلى الأقاليم وإلى الأمصار يوجههم أن يبدأوا بالدعوة إلى التوحيد كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لما أرسل معاذا رضي الله عنه إلى اليمن وكان عمره مقارب ثمان عشرة سنة قال له إنك تأتي قوما من أهل الكتاب فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وفي رواية وفي رواية إلى أن يوحدوا الله وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم قولوا لا إله إلا الله تفلحوا ويقول صلى الله عليه وسلم أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله فإذا فعلوا ذلك عصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم وحسابهم على الله And then the Sheikh said, also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he sent, uh, his, when he would send the messengers to invite the different tribes and the different people, the different areas, the different continents, the different countries, he would send them, uh, he would send his messengers and invite them to call them. And he would say to them, to begin with calling them to At-Tawheed, which is a single Allah out with worship. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned a number of evidences for that. The first one he mentioned is the hadith when the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent Mu'adh to Yemen. And at that time, Mu'adh was 18, 18 he was 18 years old. And he said to him, verily you're going to a people from the book. So let the first thing you call them, be, call them to be to testify there's no God except for Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And in another narration it mentions that he said to single Allah out with ibadah. Also as well, the statement of uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith qulu la tuflihu. The statement, the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, say, I command, there is no God except for Allah, La ilaha illallah, the kalima, the shahada, and you will be successful, meaning that you will enter paradise. And also as well, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify that there is no God except for Allah and they the shahada and if they do that they know that their property and their blood and they are unlawful except for the rights of Al-Islam أن أساس الدعوة دائما هو توحيد الله وإن أو وأن أي دعوة لا تبنى على هذا الأساس المتين فإنها دعوة فاشلة أي دعوة لا تبدأ بالتوحيد فهي دعوة فاشلة مهما دعا إليها أصحابها ومهما كثر كثر عدد أتباعها فإنها دعوة مصير دعوة مصيرها إلى الفشل كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى أفمن أسس بنيانه على تقوى من الله ورضوان خير أم من أسس بنيانه على شفا جرف هار فانهار به في نار جهنم والمقصود بالآية إن الذي يبني عمله على غير أساس متين فإن دعوته فاشلة والذي يدعو ولا يبدأ بالتوحيد كمن يبني في الهواء دون أن يؤسس أساسا متينا في الأرض ولذلك شبهه الله بقوله أفمن أسس بنيانه على تقوى من الله ورضوان وهو توحيد الله كمن أسس بنيانه على شفا جرف نار الجرف أو الجرف هو الذي يعني المكان من الأرض الذي 
يوشك أن ينهار طرف الأودية طرف الوادي يعني طرف الوادي يسمى جرفا لأنه ينهار بأي حركة تمر به نعم نعم and uh, from what was previously mentioned the result that is clear is that anyone who builds his call or his da'wah uh, upon uh, other than the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's going to result in that da'wah not being successful failure basically Irregardless of how many numbers you find the people following that call that's been that's on other than Tawheed, the end result is always going to be failure for that call or for that da'wah. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah says, is the one who bases his building or builds and his foundation or his building upon the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's pleasure, the same as a person that builds his building on, let's say, the, le the, the, the ledge or the, the Shaykh he gave an example of a valley. Jurf. Jurf. Taraf al-wadi. Aynan. Al-adhi yamurru bihi al-sayl. Yakun al-jurf hadha like the person that builds the, like the, the example basically is if you have a area where a person builds their house on the area but that area is not stable it's not a firm foundation anytime for example there's a, some rain you're going to find that that the banks of a river for example you're going to find it collapses Right, and this is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for the person who builds their dawah or calls to other than the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam shaykh. Wa lihada sabab makatha rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa hadha manhaj yajib anna tanabbaha lah. Thalatha ashrata sana yad'u ila tawheed faqat. Wa lam yanzil min umur al-deen al-ukhra ma'ad al-salah نزلت في السنة العاشرة من البعثة أما طيلة إقامته بمكة وهي ثلاث عشرة سنة كان يدعو فقط إلى التوحيد ولم ينزل ما يتعلق بالزكاة ولا بالصوم ولا بالحج ولا ولا حتى بتحريم الخمر وما كل ذلك لم ينزل ثلاث عشرة سنة وهو يدعو فقط إلى توحيد الله ليرسخه في أذهان الناس وليستقيموا عليه ولأنه متى ما كان العبد المسلم موحدا سهل عليه امتثال بقية الأوامر إذا رسخ التوحيد في قلبه وكان قويا في التوحيد فإنه سيمتثل كل ما يؤمر به أو كل ما يبلغ إياه Min and then the Shaykh he mentioned that for this reason the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he spent 13 years in Mecca just calling people to at tawheed inviting them to the worshiping of Allah alone without ascribing partners but nothing else there was no legislation to establish the salah except after 10 years and the rest of the shara'i or the laws the legislation of zakat and the likes, it didn't come until after that. So, well, of course, as well, this, the impermissibility of khamara. And this shows you as well that whenever the worshipper is a muwahid, he's strong upon tawheed, he's firm upon tawheed, he understands and he knows at tawheed, the rest of the commands to fulfill them and to establish them in his life will be easy. They'll be easy for him so long as he is firm upon Tawheed. Naam Shaykh. If anna man haqqaqa Tawheed wa khallasahu min shawaib al-shirk wal bid'a wal ma'asi fa innahu sayanqadu bi idhnillah ila sa'iri ila mtithali sa'iri al-awamir wa ijtinabi sa'iri al-nawahi. So again, the Shaykh emphasized and repeated the point that whenever a person 
realizes and establishes at tawheed and frees himself and purifies himself from shirk, which is polytheism and innovation and sins, then that would mean he finds it easy and he finds it easy to comply with the rest of the legislation, the laws and the rules, the do's and the don'ts of Islam. No. حيث توفي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والمسلمون على قلب رجل واحد وهكذا مضى عصر الخلفاء الراشدين وفي صدر الإسلام الأول يوم أن كان التوحيد قويا وكان الناس لا لم تختلف مفاهيمهم ولم تتلوث عقولهم ولا فطرهم كانوا مجتمعين على قلب رجل واحد لم يتفرقوا بل كانوا أمة واحدة وكانوا جسدا واحدا وكانوا كالجسد الواحد إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى وهذا كله قبل أن تظهر الفرق الضالة and then the Shaykh he said that when people were upon the correct manhaj, the manhaj of at tawheed, the truth, and the Muslimin at that point they were like they were unified as if they were one body, as if they were one heart, as if they were one person. And this is in the time of the Khulafa al Rashidin, as well as the early times of Al Islam. The people at that time they didn't differ in their understanding of Tawheed, their understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their knowledge of Allah. They, were, they weren't, their fitra, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't made dirty or filthy with the, what came later of the different deviated groups and sects. They didn't differ, rather they were one ummah, they were united like one body. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, that the Muslim Ummah, the Muslims are like one body. If one limb complains of a symptom of some sort, then the rest of the body suffers from a fever. Now, when people were on this واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا ولا يمكن أن يحصل اجتماع وعدم التفرق إلا بالاعتصام بحبل الله وهو تحقيق التوحيد وتصفيته من شوائب الشرك والبدع والمعاصي And then the Shaykh he mentioned that the day when people were upon this blessed manhaj, this manhaj of tawheed then you find that they, there wasn't any differences amongst them in this and they would fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the shaykh recited the verse where Allah mentions and hold fast of you to the rope of Allah and the shaykh said it's not possible for a person to uh, be united and not to be divided unless it's upon the uh, tawheed upon the worship of Allah alone without partners من المعلوم أن معنى كلمة لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق إلا الله لا معبود بحق إلا الله نفي وإثبات نفي كل ما يعبد من دون الله وإثبات جميع أنواع العبادة لله وحده لا شريك له هذا هو المعنى الصحيح لمعنى لا إله إلا الله ثم حصل انحراف كما سنبينه لمعنى لا إله إلا الله الأمر الذي أدى إلى تفرق الأمة وانحرافها عن الجادة. So the Sheikh said from the uh, misguidance and going astray that happened in 
at tawheed or concerning the oneness of Allah worship and Allah alone is first of all in the Sheikh he said he began by saying first of all the meaning of at tawheed which is well known that when you say the meaning of the kalima la ilaha illallah that there is no God except for Allah that it means there is no God who is worshipped in truth no God who is worshipped rightfully except for Allah and this this statement or this phrase it contains a negation and an affirmation negation of worship of everything and anything and then affirmation of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and this is the correct meaning of the kalima la ilaha illallah and then after that there was misguidance and deviation in the meaning in the understanding of the meaning of the kalima no. وَإِذَا فَهِمَ الْمُسْلِمِ الْحَقِّ هَذَا الْفَهْمِ لمعنى لا إله إلا الله اتضحت أمامه الصورة وبنى كل شيء على هذا الأساس نعم أمامه صورة إذا اتصر إذا فهم المسلم معنى لا إله إلا الله اتضحت له كل الأمور يعني اتضح له الدين كله وبالتالي فإنه لا ينحرف عنه يعلم أنه لا ينقاد إلا لله ولا يذبح إلا لله ولا ينذر إلا لله ولا يستغيث إلا بالله ولا يدعو إلا الله ولا يستجير إلا بالله ولا يستغيث إلا بالله ولا يطلب العون والمدد إلا من الله سبحانه وتعالى كما قال الله جل وعلا قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين no. Uh, the Shaykh mentioned it, when the Muslim understands this reality, the reality of at tawheed and the meaning of the kalima, he has the correct understanding of the meaning of la ilaha illallah, it, then everything becomes apparent to him. Everything becomes clear to him in relation to the aspects of the religion. Uh, and then he, the Shaykh, he, he, he won't become misguided or become munharif. He won't deviate from this path. And then the Shaykh mentioned the st statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, say verily my salat, my prayer, and my sacrifice, my nusuk, and my living and my dying are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. I don't associate partners with Allah in that, and that is what I've been commanded to do. So when it comes to the Muslim who's muwahid, he won't sacrifice or make a slaughter for other than Allah. He won't supplicate or call upon other than Allah. He's not going to seek help or seek saving, or seek salvation, or seek forgiveness in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he understands the meaning of la ilaha illallah. I'm sure. أما الذين انحرفوا عن هذا المعنى ففسروها منهم من فسرها بأن لا إله إلا الله معناها لا موجود إلا الله وهذا خطأ الله موجود وأنت موجود والأرض موجودة والسماوات موجودة فالوجود ليس هو ال ال الذي يحقق التوحيد لأن الخالق موجود والمخلوق موجود ولكن لكل منهما وجود يخصه وهذا يؤدي إلى معنى خطير سأعرض له بعد قليل As for those that have gone astray and deviated from this correct understanding then they explain and they make tafsir of the kalima la ilaha illallah by a different explanation. So some of them will say that there is no existence except for Allah. There is nothing in existence except for Allah. And this is a mistake. This is incorrect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exists. And likewise you exist and the trees exist and the world exists. So this understanding is incorrect. The one that has this understanding that there's no existence except for Allah, he hasn't realized a tawheed properly. Because every, everything which, and also everything which is in existence is in existence which is uh, in accordance with what is specific to that thing, Nam Shaykh. And some of us say, La ilaha illallah, because he is not a God illallah. And this is a matter of fact that he knows even some of the Muslims. From those who are on the way, but they do not believe in the Rasul. So they say that he is not a God illallah. As he said to Allah, about the Muslims, the Muslims of Quraysh, 
ولئن سألتهم من خلق السماوات والأرض لا يقولون الله فاعترافهم بالخلق هل يدخلهم في الإسلام؟ لم يدخلهم في الإسلام لأنهم لم يفهموا معنى لا إله إلا الله أنه لا معبود بحق إلا الله لم يعتقدوا أن معناها لا معبود بحق إلا الله ولكن الخلق كثير من غير المسلمين يقرون به إنما المقصود ليس هو لا خالق إلا الله وإنما المقصود لا معبود بحق إلا الله Also as well, you have another group that, might, that says that the meaning of la ilaha illallah is that la khaliq illallah, that there's no creator except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this understanding, this is an understanding which even the non-Muslims have, which is that a person can be upon the fitrah, and he says that there is a creator, and there's only one creator, for example, but he doesn't believe in the messengers, or he doesn't believe in the messenger. And in this regard, this is something which even the disbelievers at the, the Mushrikeen at the time of the Messenger of Allah, they used to affirm create that Allah is the creator. As Allah mentions concerning them, if you used to ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? They will surely say Allah. They will surely say Allah. So their acknowledgement that there is no creator except for Allah did not enter them into Al Islam. Because they used to believe, because they did not believe, they did not have the i'tiqad or the belief that there is no one worthy of worship except for Allah. So the objective is not to say that there is no creator except for Allah, but to actually affirm that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah. وفي توحيد الألوهية لكن ليس التوحيد قاصرا على الحكم أبدا وإنما التوحيد أعظم من ذلك فإن معناه لا معبود بحق إلا الله لا رب إلا الله لا يستحق كامل الأسماء والصفات إلا الله فهذا التوحيد أعظم من ذلك وأعظم من هذا المفهوم الضيق also, there's another deviated group, another misguided group. They say the meaning of la ilaha illallah is la hakim. There's no legislator except for Allah. And Allah being the legislator is a part of Allah's rububiyyah as well as a part of Allah's uluhiyyah, a part of Allah's lordship as well as a part of Allah's godship or right to be worshipped. And tawheed is greater than limiting it to just this aspect which is hakimiyyah, of legislation. The meaning of the kalima, la ilaha illallah, is there's no God worthy of worship except for Allah. That means there's no Lord except for Allah. That also means that no one has the right for the most perfect and absolute names and attributes except for Allah. So it's greater in its meaning than limiting it just to legislation. ولذلك لا نريد التوسع في ذكر الانحرافات في هذا الباب لكن المهم أن ننطق بلا إله إلا الله ونحن عالمون بمعناها وعاملون بمقتضاها ظاهرا وباطنا يعني إذا نطق المسلم بهذه الكلمة لا بد أن يكون عالما وعاملا ليس المقصود النطق, النطق بها بمجرد اللسان كما هو شأن المنافقين الذين ينطقون بها وقلوبهم تخالفها كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى يقولون بأفواههم ما ليس في قلوبهم وإنما المراد أن يقولها العبد المؤمن وهو عالم بمعناها وعامل بمقتضاها متثلا للأوامر التي تقتضيها لا إله إلا الله ومتنبا لسائر النواهي نعم So therefore it is uh, the Sheikh said without wanting to go into depth of 
men by of mentioning the different deviated groups and sects concerning this particular point, the meaning of a tawheed. He said that what's important is to understand that when we say the la ilaha illallah, when we say the kalima, that we are knowledgeable of its meaning and acting upon what it necessitates. So we have knowledge of what we're saying and we're acting upon what is necessitated by that kalima. Uh, and the objective is not just to say it with our tongues, to say la ilaha illallah and not do anything or not have knowledge. Like this is the situation and the circumstance, this is the affair of the manafiqeen. This is the affair of the manafiqeen. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, they say what, with their mouths what is not in their hearts. They say what is in their mouth, they say with their mouths what is not in their hearts. As for the Muwahid, then he says the kalima, having knowledge of its meaning and acted upon what it necessitates of fulfilling the commands and staying away from the prohibitions. <laughs> أن نلخص ما تقدم أولا أهمية أولا أن ألغى الحكمة من خلق الجن والإنس وقد سمعنا الآيات في هذا الباب ثانيا أهمية التوحيد وأنه محور دعوة الرسل وثالثا أهمية البدء بالتوحيد وأنه لا يبدأ بأي عمل قبله ورابعا أهمية فهم التوحيد كما فهمه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه وأن معنى لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق إلا الله وخامسا بيان الانحرافات التي حصلت في هذا المفهوم والحذر منها وسادسا وعله يكون قبل ذلك أهمية تأسيس كل عمل على توحيد الله سبحانه وتعالى فإنه إذا أسس عمله على التوحيد سهل عليه القيام بامتثال الأوامر واجتناب النواهي وسابعا بيان ما كان عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه وما كان عليه المسلمون في صدر الإسلام من القيام على تحقيق التوحيد من القيام على تح بتحقيق التوحيد وتصفيته من شوائب الشرك والبدع والمعاصي حتى ظهرت الفرق الضالة وكانت سببا في فرقة الأمة وتفرقها والله نسأل أن يوفقني وإياكم لتحقيق التوحيد والموت على التوحيد و تأسيس جميع أعمالنا على التوحيد إنه جواد كريم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. And then the Shaykh he said in concluding this uh, lecture, uh, in summarizing what we already or what he already spoke about, he mentioned the bullet points. So he mentioned maybe six or seven bullet points. The first point was the wisdom behind the creation of ints and jinn, of humanity and jinn kind. The second point is the importance of a tawheed and that it was, the, it, is, it was the point of the reason behind the messengers and their call, all of the messengers, their call was to tawheed. The third point, the importance of beginning with tawheed and not beginning with anything else when it comes to giving da'wah. Number four, the importance of understanding a tawheed like it was understood by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Point number five, clarification of the misguidance and the deviation of so of what took place and was uh, happened in misunderstanding the meaning of la ilaha illallah the shahada number six also the importance of basing every single action that a person does on tawheed of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
basing every single action that a person does on the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that once a person does that, the rest of the commands and the prohibitions will become easy for him. Number seven, clarifying what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon and his companions and the early generations of establishing a Tawheed and realizing a Tawheed and rectifying and purifying from anything which opposes that, whether it's shirk or whether it's innovations, bid'ah or whether it's sins. Up and, and also as well to the point up until the time that the misguided and deviated groups and sects, they appeared with their misunderstanding or deviated understanding of the kalima, of the meaning of la ilaha illallah. And then uh, the Shaykh Hafidahullah, he made dua for all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us upon a tawheed and makes us of those who build our actions upon a tawheed. Naam.